Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and another Workbench Wednesday. Uh, first, I want to thank you for joining me again this week. Uh, and of course, I uh, hope you brought some questions and are ready to do, well, not surprisingly, Rust. <laughs> uh, it wasn't originally the plan. Um, uh, the Stampa that I'm working on for the Nova Open Charitable Foundation. Uh, well, I figure if I'm giving it away, people are probably going to want to see some of my Rust on it more than they're going to want to see uh, colors. So this is primarily going to be a big rusty piece, um, but I'm going to use it to explore uh, different options for rust, uh, different pigments effects, both realistic and fantasy, uh, fantastic. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get started on that. Um, of course, if this is your first time joining this week, uh, please remember to like, subscribe, click the bells and whistles or whatever you're supposed to do now. Join us on Facebook, subscribe to the newsletter, all those things. We've got some newsletter uh, exclusive uh, coupons coming up here pretty quick too. So let me get my glasses on and let's get started. All right. So I did put a coat of the uh, dark iron, which I finally found. Um, there we are, the dark iron paint. Uh, and then gave it a quick wash with the uh, old oil. And this is going to be a trick to see, of course, because, well, it's shiny. And we're going to knock some of that back today. Um, so that's actually one of the first things I'm going to do. Uh, well, maybe, maybe not. Um, we can talk about whether or not to do metallics. Or all the rusty bits, because they're all going to be rusty. Every little bit. Ha, 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 ha. Such rust. Such rust as this. It's going to be fantastic. All right. Uh, well, let's see. Rust or metal, rust or metal, rust or metal, rust or metal. Well, I'm already gloved up. I might as well start rusting. And I'm going to be doing a lot of airbrushing today. Um, and it's super windy outside, which means I can't uh, simply set up the venting system here in the studio uh, to blow out, uh, which means I'm going to be wearing my respirator today. Uh, that should make this uh, fun and exciting. Uh, please, out there, uh, periodically let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, even with the respirator on. No, YouTube. I am your painter. Uh, let's start with the big belly piece. Let's make the biggest splash right here out the gate. Always fun trying to get one of these settled when you have a, a beard. <laughs> All right, so, think, 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 let's start there. Not surprisingly, I do have my rust paints ready to go. And of course, I'm gonna need some uh, red rust, or orange rust, old rust. Do, 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 and today I want rust shadow. We're gonna save the others for now. I already have the brown on there. I don't need the brown so much because I have that nice uh, heavy base. Oh, and thanks for letting me know you can still hear me. I really don't want to get cancer, so I do prefer wearing my respirator. You should too, if you're airbrushing out there. Well, that sucked. Oh, that's not how that was supposed to work. There we go. All right. We need lots of that today. Doop 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 doop. -doo. Should probably towel up. There we go. I've got my towel. Got some orange. This is the uh, rust orange color. And these are the heavy matte colors from the uh, rust set. Oh. 
this rust shadow, not in grime. And of course, that's a translucent color, and it's meant to be. Just going to add a little bit of water to each of these. It's just tap water. Uh, the only time you really need to worry about something like distilled water is if you live in an area with very heavy water. So if you're using uh, well water or something like that, yeah, by all means, yeah. Get some distilled water. Don't put all that uh, calcium and whatnot through your brush. But that's all you'd have to worry about there. One wonderful color. Ah, ah, ah. Two, two wonderful colors. Ah, ah, ah. Three, three wonderful colors. Ah, ah, ah. Four, four wonderful colors. Ah, ah, ah. All right. That man was my hero when I was a kid, I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm coming into this uh, somewhat blind. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, what kind of rusts I want to do here? So I'm just going to give me a, give myself a minute to study the different components. See where I'm definitely going to want to highlight things because they did a wonderful job adding various textures to these. So we've got the plate. You've actually got some hexes here. All the bullet holes. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to start with just some. Basic generic rusty stuff. A little bit of old rust just for fun. Really nice to have all of you with me today while I'm painting. Having a Xanax and panic attacks sort of day. Really great to have an excuse or something to do. And Knowing that company's out there, and looking forward to the broadcast, so I really appreciate that you guys are here with me today. And like I said, it gave me such a great excuse and opportunity to come and spend time with you. Let's mix this color up a bit. I didn't get quite enough of the solids mixed up. Hey, Rick, welcome. Good to have you here today. The color balance is off again today. Let's see if I can uh, correct that white balance for you again. Now you can start to see the purple at least. Hey, I'm wet. Give me some spiders. I'm not too worried about that though, because this is a rust base coat. Gonna turn that pressure way down, I think. Part of the reason I say anytime someone gives you a fixed pressure for your airbrush, they're really doing you a disservice. Lots of things can affect it. It's not free spray. This gives me an excuse to switch to my other brush. Yeah, see the spidering I got there? Turn that up.
A little bit of schmutz in the nozzle there, messing things up. Still have some schmutz in the nozzle there, messing things up, apparently. There we go. Ah, oh, perfect. Much better. Another yeah, simple answer to the record. Not that the purple is the most vibrant thing you're going to see today, because it is awfully subtle, as it's meant to be. Some opportunity to see that. There we go. Perfect. Since I'm doing this largely in rust, I'm uh, going to go ahead and uh, modulate it all towards the top, just like I would for a you know more humanoid face. So I am paying attention as I sweep this one up. I'm just going to put my dark corner down here, Woo! or anywhere. I'm still not cooperating with me. And then right there, and that area. That's, that's good, that's good, that's good. Just slap some color on this part. Just gonna get some actual metal on it. I'm also gonna look at the interplay between uh, exposed or, or fresh scratches, old scratches and whatnot. They're very different. Where I live, they're coming around with these big uh, triangular bucket little tractors that uh, uh, scoop up all the yard waste people put in their gutters. And I love getting to see them because there's a little bit of shiny on them, but by and large, they're gray. Because the metal's been impacted so many times, it's lost in the chance of luster. So 
So I've been having trouble with that paint. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the needle, check it. There's some schmutz in there. I'm going to give it a good cleaning later. I think it'll get a little more snug than it should be. All right. Let's get back to this one, and let's give you guys something to see. I'm going to bring in the yellow rust now. Or orange, excuse me, this is not yellow. Let's see if the paint cooperates in this brush today. The second time around. There we are. I'm going to turn the pressure up a bit. Back to the business card trick. What do we get today? Somebody with a blank back. Oh, there we go. Because the back of your card is blank. It's not a card. It's scratch paper. Yeah, I'm going to switch brushes, which makes me happy anyway. Really, any excuse to use my infinity is a good day. Give that brush a good cleaning later. Read it to pieces so I remember to do so. And swap back to this one. Oh, infinity. You're so nice. Let's paint together. How you doing? Yeah, I missed you. Oh, yeah. You know what I like. There we go. That's the way you do it.
I'm going to make this a bit brighter where I'm trying to draw that attention upward because I'm going to knock it down later with other acrylics. Right in there, so I'm right in that recess. So now we're working our way up. And I don't want to do that little panel. Let's do that little panel all. I want to highlight it. That's what we're going to do. So the hashway over here. <laughs> you need more modulation. Say that even nice and bright. Because this airbrush knows what it's doing. Panel right there, nice and bright. Oh yeah, here it comes. Skadoosh. Start there. Go here. I'm using my infinity. What the hell am I doing? I don't even need that. <laughs> Clean the tip off with some ISO. Wipe. There we go. Put some built up paint on it. I guess that when I'm spraying a heavy acrylic and I'm taking my time. But yeah, now you can see just as is, it's starting to come together. It's starting to draw that attention upward, although I missed a panel here, so let's fix that. All right. Now 
Now there's a hunk of chunk of burning stop bug that says, pay attention to me. <laughs> All right, let's move on to another hunk of chunk of burning stop, shall we? Back to the modulation game. Just gonna be lazy. Check the tip this time. There we go. Some more paint. Because this brush also knows how to make some more paint. This brush is so good. Splash right here. Get in that area, get a little spidery. Come on, get a spidery. Thank you. I'll spread that around and give me something interesting. Thank you. And that means that this one needs to be highlighted at the top. Like I saw, and this one needs to be done at the time. I'm just gonna do this freehand. Fella up here. Behold, the rust tells you which way to go. Start putting it together just to see how the uh, modulation works as a whole in just a minute. Especially interesting because of the uh, panic attack today, still very shaky. So, trying to get through this in the midst of a mild panic and a little bit of a shake. Just little things Just keep the day interesting.
Look at that. All right. I'll rinse the brush well. Brush should be good to go. I'm going to take, turn that off. Oh my gosh. Oh, get this hot, steamy, itchy thing off my face. And I don't mean the beard. All right. Let's see if I can get some uh, focus in the right spots here to really give you a look at. I mean, the purple is going to be too subtle to pick up here. We'll have to keep working on that color balance for you. My back to uh, auto white color balance. In fact, let me try uh, making it not so auto. How's that? Well, that's starting to look better. Here we go. A lot better. You can really start to see that transition now. There. Gives you an idea of where I'm going with this. Same on the individual side panels. Put these together here in just a second. We'll see very quickly how they'll climb up towards that center point. And what that means is that we need to do a quick bit of dry fitting and see how this is all going to work out. All right, so this goes, in fact, I'm just going to skip the whole lower bit just to do this. This will go meow and meow. Uh, we figured this out the other day. Me on. And backwards. Oh, it's killing me. All right. Back to this. One of these. You go on there like so. And you go down there like so. That's why it looks wonky. They're not like that at all. They go way lower. Of course they do. There we go. That makes more sense again. So we'll have it all set up. Like, if I can get it the dry fit to hold in place for a second, come on. Like so. Starting to work its way up here. And of course, I'll do this without the uh, housing in place, but we'll have the Big shiny gun sticking out of there. We'll bring some color down in here and all that. I'll bring it onto the bars here instead of metal and rust because they're going to be surrounded by that. And uh, yeah, I'll keep playing white balance because it still doesn't look right. Come here, Pad. You guys all get out of there. Show me this. That is not white. That is yellow. Right there. All right. Enough fiddling around. And let's get back to this thing. So we've got our bits, which actually go like that. Now we can see that transition as it's coming up. And I can start to shade and play with colors around it. So I'm actually going to bring some of that purple back out. Old rust. There's the old rust paint again. 
number two. A little bit of water. Boop. A little bit of compressor. Boop. A little bit of mixing. It's also allergy season here, just to keep things exciting. Imagine it's allergy season everywhere. But Sacramento is the city of trees. We have more trees per capita than any U.S. city and are second only in the world to uh, Paris. Something I understand we aim to correct. Why you no painting? More pressures. pressures Nope, nope, that's definitely plugged. You can see it now. What the heck, brush? What don't you like today? Why are you so plugged? Oh, yeah, I see Schmitz right there. It's been a while since I gave these a proper cleaning, but I did expect it would be fine. I did quick job beforehand. Just a little plug, all right. Of course, the infinity uh, nozzles, the needles, uh, the tips are very easy to clean. And they even have a special tool they give you for it. Because this one is all plugged up. Yeah. Well, poopers. I don't want to take the time to clean that one either, so it's a good thing I have even more airbrushes. <laughs> all right. Well, I know what I'm doing immediately after the show today. pressure more pressure good enough
Still not good enough. Turn that in. Looks good. That all looks good. So now we definitely get, we can definitely start to see the purple yellow contrast now. We'll have fun breaking that up a bit later. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look. Chicken boom boom. Chicken boom boom boom. Come on down on camera. You're the next contestant on The Rust is Right. And already starting to really draw that eye upwards towards the head because I'm actually going to make the head the focus instead of the belly gun. The belly gun is an accessory. It's not just a gun carriage. Once you give it a face, it's a character. And of course, I'm going to put gabos all over the darn thing. Grats, thank you. And, uh, and yeah, I'm going to have some fun. But let's see, what else needs to be rusted over here? Well, I do have the central panel. It still needs to be rusted. And the little mouthy bits. So let's get to that. like with airbrushes today. Part of our house is very hot and dry today, so everything is woof, drying out too quickly, except for that glass. Wow. There we go. Mouthy bits. All right, the mouthy bits go on like that. All right, so purple, purple, purple. Well, the whole side is going to be purple. I want the sides to be less of a focus. We'll make something out of those fun spikes. And we go back to the orange rust real quick. Hey, Cujo Painting, glad to have you with us. Thanks for the company. rust here and I have to remember that I'm going to draw color up onto the uh, flat panels so
spiky bits out front are going to be a lot of fun to paint. And I've got some uh, very exciting little uh, tricks that I'm going to put on that. With special thanks to Chris Borer. One of the most talented sculptors I know for very fine detail. Well, like a lot of artists, he seems to think too little of his work. We'll disabuse him of that when you guys see what I've got coming. All right, might as well hit this thing and that thing and all the tangs. You know, you're going to be colorful. Just a little bit of a glaze. Give you the hint of the rust colors. They're not visible at all. Nice and bright at the front of the canopy. Along that edge. And here. Just a little bit. And keep that area dark. And less interesting. All right, any other uh, orange that I feel I missed? Let's take a look at all the components together again. This time with a strap across the middle there. And right, let's see if I can get this to work. Kind of sort of. All right. So here's our modulation so far. Oop, I see a spot. Can't miss this panel. It'll make me sad. Hey, <laughs> stop that. And now, because I've been waiting so long to do it, I get to pull out the rust shadow. Now, I've talked about this before in classes and whatnot, that rust shadow is a very interesting color. That's not it. That's the red. Or red. Yeah. yeah. It is a translucent color. So that's just going to give me some glazing for shadow here. And it's the right green brown to pull it off. And because it's in a translucent base, get that water out of there. It's going to let the other rust colors show through. Let me uh, get some stuff out of the way because I want to do some masking here. Right there.
Here's a fun fact about the uh, Rust Shadow, though. It's also a translucent mat. <laughs> uh, you know, because it could. Well, technically we couldn't until we did. <laughs> And we were all quite impressed with ourselves. Too heavy on that spot but it still works just whoo, fine and i stuck the whole thing in the pot of old rust how exciting Oh, well, thank you, uh, Jordan, for the compliment on the rust. You can do this without uh, an airbrush. Uh, all of Everything I'm doing now can be done without it. You just glaze it. Uh, it simply takes longer. Uh, well, it takes longer for some. It takes longer for me. <laughs> uh, I remember the first time someone told Wapple he needed to have a uh, an airbrush to speed up his work. He took a brand new model and three paints and put them on a little scrap of plastic in front of him and just went to town. And of course, a two minutes had a finished model, of course, to do a waffle. I'm like, okay, well, maybe you don't. <laughs> like, no. Waffle's got his tools. By which I mean his mind. And his amazing talent. Don't forget about that cat. They're amazing. All right, time to check. It's looking most rusty. Wouldn't you agree, number two? Yeah, looks like that'll do. Nom 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 nom. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Since I'm going to be working with metallics now, it's definitely time for that. Uh, clean up the paint before I stick the model back in it. Turn off the compressor, thank goodness. Oof. Take off the glove. Ugh, we won't talk about that. It happens in black rubber gloves. It stays in black rubber gloves, apparently. <laughs> it's 
Good thing I'm wearing a sock. <laughs> hey, look, all better. All right. So let's, uh, before I do metallics, actually, I want to start blocking in a bit of color. Um, just to add some excitement. So let's do that. And of course, I didn't grab a colors because I want to grab colors. Uh, but my paint is right here. So that makes it easier. One of the colors out of its bin. I saw it a minute ago. It was entire black. Could not hit two of them. All right, I've got my ground forces gray, Federation slate. Oh, I've got the blue, it's not what I want. I've got my new white. It's a lovely linen off white. And I better find my comet red because that is, well, no, let's go yellows. Let's go yellows. I like yellows. We're going to go rebel yellow. Boom. And yes, that's, I do definitely recommend picking up an airbrush uh, if for no other reason than yeah, it'll, it can speed up your work considerably, uh, particularly when you're doing large models. Um, I mean, I could hit this with big brushes, but what's the point of that? Actually, we'll go straight to the yellow. For this technique, blue, I'll mix that up a bit better. Remember to shake your paints, boys and girls. Need a bit of sponge. So I'm getting a bit of my blister foam. What I tell folks is, you know, go ahead and sell one of those Land Raiders in your closet and pick up an airbrush from Harbor Freight. And then you'll have time to paint more Land Raiders. <laughs> <coughs> All right. <coughs> This matters, so I'm going to mask it. Reminding myself that this is not a commission with time constraints. This is a charity donation, and I am going to put my best work into it. So when it comes time to the really nitty gritties, I'm going to do it properly. I'm also going to scratch a bunch of details for this. I'm not entirely sure what yet, but Looking at its goodies. Certainly it'll have a uh, Rusty's medicated bumper ointment sticker on it somewhere. Thank you, flexible tape tape. Yeah, you can still do anything you want with brushes. The only techniques that really don't work with a traditional brush are like the hairspray technique just won't. Um, I've gotten it to work with a rattle can though. Uh, <laughs> I don't recommend it. Um, but I got it to work. I was determined. So close. But again, I only have to get this right once. I think I've been working on a bunch of fiddly terrain for Secret Weapon lately. I 
I keep having to remind myself of the same thing. You only have to get it right once. You only have to get it right once. You only have to make one master mold. Getting around to teaching the crew to do proper two-part molds is so I'm no longer the only one who can do it. Instead of split molds. Where you just suspend the piece and then, you know, cut it out. Not ideal. Hey, Greg, how are you? Thanks for joining us again this week. Oh, beautiful paint. Dabbing off a bunch of this excess. Not too much, because I actually do want it to cover. You're saying, Mr. Justin, but that's way too yellow. Oh my God, you're right. I'm gonna have to fix that. All right. Now we're gonna let that dry for a minute and do it again. <laughs> In the meantime, so we've gotten so far. Little yellow spotties. And I'll find a panel on here to yellow up too. Just a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to do this with a lot of color. I'm going to stick to the rust since that's what I'm known for. And if somebody's going to bid on my model, it's probably because it's rusty. <laughs> all right. So all of that taping for that little bit of work. <laughs> but it's going to be great. All right, where did my water go? It's been, uh, what, an hour? I should probably have some water. You should too. Does everyone remember to take their meds and stay hydrated today? Huh? 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 All right. Self-care, you can do it. Even if you really don't want to. <laughs> So let's see, do I actually see anything else that I want to yellow? And the answer might actually just be no. I'm gonna do one of these in red, one in the black and white checks for the goths. Oh, wait, it goes all the way around the other way, Justin. Stop doing that. Yellow teeth. Some red dags down there, but do I want to do anything else here in yellow? Not with the sponge technique, I suspect. Looking around, looking around, looking around. Oop, oop, what do we got here? What, 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 what? Let's do that. Let's see if I can recycle any of this tape. Reuse, rather. There's a nice little panel we can yellow. And Jess, is that you saying that you sort of, oh wow, man, taping is really hard to do when your hands won't stop shaking. I need to take a break to go take the other half of my Xanax. <laughs> By which maybe, I'm pretty sure that's gonna have to happen here in a minute. So come on, we'll all get engaged in some self-care together and stay hydrated and take our meds and. So that's one of the great things about having the show is, is today I uh, would not have had a good day if it weren't for being able to come here and spend time with you folks. I really appreciate the fact that you choose to come and spend time watching the broadcast and hanging out. Hey, how about I put this on screen at some point? Not that you really need to watch me tape, right? Oh, yeah, whatever you're taping. All right, that's all masked up. It's a good thing I threw away my sponge, but I can reach it. Bling, 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 bling. Bling, 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 bling. 
Take that off. Add some back. There we go. Another nice yellow panel. We'll tone that back and then highlight it later. So we'll have that on there. Some color pops, we've got room for that. All right, now it's time to get to the metallics. I wanted to find each of those metallic panels. Uh, and that's things like the uh, checker plate here and these panels. Um, I'm going to start blocking all of that in before I get to anything else at this point. And that means swapping some paints around. I'm going to need dark iron, which is 14. I'm going to need tire black, 7. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Some old oil, which is 17. Wait a minute. 14, 17. Okay, I'm, that was a 7 in the middle. That's why. <laughs> Uh, engine metal, which is our shiny silver one, 28. And I'm going to want some amethyst wash. Uh, you can tell I've got an old bottle with the old label here, too. That's fine. Need to shake the heck out of this. Get it back into suspension. And thank you, Jordan, for the uh, compliment. Um, what'll be fun, and I'll, I'll do one of them right now, actually, before I get to the metals. I'll, uh, that's right, I took my pencils off of the wall because I got a new cup for them. Now, what did I do with my pencils? More importantly, and more likely, what did my son do with my pencils? <laughs> oh, I'll peek over to his desk. Peek over on my desk. There should be a cup here full of pencils. I need my watercolor pencils. That's why I got a new bin for him, as I use them so often. I want to have them uh, in easier reach. Big black plastic cup, where are you? You can see all my pens and pens and pens. All right, kiddo pants, did you steal my pencils? Well, this is weird. I might have to steal his pencils. <laughs> The one time I don't bother to check for something because I know where it is on account of everything's been organized again for a while, except for the last little art supply stuff over here. And of course, this time, they are completely disappeared. Well, I'll find it as I work because I have to come back to it anyway. So I really do need my pencils for this project. So. Uh, while I pause in a minute, I will do that. So before I start the metallics, uh, I'm going to take a brief break uh, to visit the facilities and uh, take the rest of my meds for the day to see if I can calm down enough to keep going. Thanks so much. I'll be right back.
and I'm back. Here we go. So, medications have been taken. Ready to do some metals. I'm going to need some larger brushes. And I'm going to need more sponge. And in this case, Cables got me thinking about where I'm going to add a bunch of cabling and tubing to this as we get towards the end of the project. All right, but I do want to start blocking in those panels. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just put a mess of dark iron on my pa palette here. Or not, everybody's plugged up today. Pokey pokey little paint. Oh, and I did find my pencil. I'd moved them off of my desk to where the last of the stuff I need to organize is. So this is a uh, white watercolor pencil. It's just an artist's loft white watercolor pencil. And uh, if you haven't seen me do this before, um, I'm sorry for every edge highlight that you've ever had to do. Without the use of a pencil, because you're gonna be sad. Edge highlighting. A little stark, that's fine. You rub it with your finger and oh look, it's subtle. A little too subtle in that case. Edge highlights. And that way I can get in here and define the panels too as I start working. see what we shall see. Where is their detail lurking? Waiting to be found. They're gonna jump out! Eat your face! Like detail always does on models, you know. Models are vicious. Bloodthirsty monsters. like Toy Story, but with angry Krieg Marines. Or in this case, Krieg Imperial Guard, excuse me. Oh, look at that one right there. Let's pull you out of there. Talk about that. Now the panels on this are outlined. Easy to find, easy to see, and just even right here, uh, before I blend any of that in to, to smooth out the, the harshness of the pencil, it looks pretty darn good if I say so myself. I may be biased, highly, but that is my highly biased one-sided opinion. This looks good. Good job, Justin. <laughs> All right, so now let's have some fun with that dark iron. And I'm going to start with which brush? This brush. And get my keyboard off the table. Why did that stay here? Go away, keyboard. One of the things I despise about taking Xanax is that it makes me very forgetful. So I'll find myself surprised 
all day today. Which doesn't sound bad, right? Just walking around. I think, what the heck was I doing? But it's that kind of surprise, not the good kind. <laughs> all right, let's get this one. That dark iron treatment. I'm going to make these panels very different, even though they're going to get the same basic treatment. Same with the rust, right? I'm going to do a lot of different things to these panels, even though they all start with the same foundation. Phone doesn't really make noise, but that's my wife. Kind of has to be its own do not disturb. But all's well, she was confirming her plans with a friend <laughs> for later. But my phone will see the message and just say, hey, you get to talk to Justin, even if he's doing a broadcast. Because I never went some, knowing when something's going to happen with a kid, and I'll have to rush out of here in a hurry. And, Go pick him up or something. You'll note the dark iron does just fine, thinned, very thin, in fact. And you can see I'm effectively making a wash out of it here to try and get it into those spots. Keep having to thicken it up a bit. But I know I've had a lot of bad luck uh, trying to thin acrylic metallics in the past. to that before I make any other metallic decisions here. Get to work on some of these. This panel needs some love. Putting that on nice and thin. For now, I'm just defining panel lines. I'm not sure if I'm going to come back and do wet blending or glazing or what to add my interest in being me, probably wet blending. Set up some additional colors and crank it out. Metallic. All right. Let's get the basic metallics on this one, and we'll put the three of them back together to see how we feel about the progress. And that's going to make this metallic, because it is on the other one. Leave that one rusty to help differentiate. Panel there. That's 
why I often uh, do my panel lining with a pencil before I get to this part. It uh, makes it easier to see those little little widgets down there. Here we go, beam talc too. I know you're back to back with the other one, doesn't matter. One other panel to do, I suppose. Mustn't forget this one. Have to remember that. Be metal, my pretty. Be metal. And I'll come back for detail metal later, like some of the rivets and maybe some of the little uh, dags and whatnot. But for the moment, no. Yes, all right. So let's see how this all comes together now. We've got you on this side. Oh, I did forget something else, didn't I? All right. Let's see here. That whole panel. Spike. Open up the hinge. Get it on the inside, even though I don't want to oversee it. I love the attention to detail from the artist, the sculptor at Forge World as well. A bit of flash. There we go. Bring that up later. Uh, but you've got the spikes on the front, of course, and the bolts to hold them in place in the back. Love it. Well done. Bravo. Bravo. <clears throat> and this whole thing. Blart. Oh, which is actually that whole panel. Wow, that's nice. Cool. That'll look nice. All right. Now we can put it together. No, I'm alive. Yeah, I know, that's fine. We can do that. <gasps> All right. Now we have the center panel. The side panel. Let's bring this down where it's a little easier to see. And what you'll discover fairly quick is that I'm actually working in what is effectively a, uh, effectively, effectively, a uh, yellow and black scheme. And all that color so far is still drawing that attention upward. So as I begin work on the metals, of course, I'm going to highlight sections of it, uh, glaze sections of it, shade sections of it, uh, all to draw that attention up. But this needs to dry for a couple of minutes. Um, in fact, I need to get a section, which I... No, that's right. I decided to leave that one rusty. So I did not miss it. I made a decision. So while I wait for those to dry, I'm going to get started on the canon. If I started, I mean, I'm going to continue. Uh, at the moment, it's a very uniform 
um, dark iron, uh, a light dry brushing with the engine metal, uh, and then um, a wash with the uh, old oil. So we're going to kick this up a notch, and we're going to start, uh, since there is a shiny section on it, by getting rid of that shiny section, well, the bright section. So we're going to grab some not engine grime, tire black. This one's in a clear base, too, or the blue base, excuse me. So I'm going to shake that up really well to get the paint into it. All right. And I am going to pull in some dark iron and some tire black. Mix those two together. Apparently all of it. Plus a bit more tire black. Which is probably right in front of me. Nope, you're dark iron. See what I mean? I'll lose paints over the course of a couple of seconds just sitting here. I want this to be very much have its blue aspect to it. That blue black is going to be perfect for what we want right now. And what I want is a paper towel. I hate to waste it this way, but I need to clean this brush off pretty thoroughly. So there's our color. See some of the blue. There you go. And I'm going to check my sock and dry brush, actually, on the lower half of the model. It's a blue-black color with a metallic flake in it. What kind of dry brush? Okay, mostly paint. Clean up those spots right there. I'm going to lay it on a bit thick. All right, dry that. And I want this to be thinner, so where did I put soft body black? Yeah, and thank you, Jordan. Once I uh, decided it was going to be a rusty piece, the, the rest was fairly easy. And spent some time last night while I was falling asleep thinking about, you know, which colors I wanted to use and, you know, how do I get uh, each of the different uh, clans in there and blah, 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 blah. And finally I was like, wait a minute. I'm actually going to go straight to the ink. I am known for my rust. Let me be rusty. I just added a little bit of black ink, and that's going to make this intensely black. You can very much see, sort of, maybe, can you? <laughs> Where the black is, not really. Uh, metals, what do you do? So I'm just blending this in, very much the bottom third. Having that line is good. I want it. Clear delineation between the light and the dark areas. It'll look really sharp as we keep moving. We'll pull back in some of this. That's that tire black metallic we made. Shake 
get that because it would be. And now I'm feathering this out towards the front um, at a bit of an angle uh, because remember the sum of the gun is recessed. All right, from there. I do enjoy painting the rust, and that was definitely a, a part of it, Greg, was that, well, if I'm going to spend uh, several Wednesdays in a row painting this, and then all of my free painting time between has to go to this, because, you know, I've only got so much time before the charity needs it, well, I might as well knock myself out a bit and have a good time. All right. I'm going to take some of that engine metal and add it to that blue-black color we made. Wiping off quite a bit. A little more blending on the sides here since it's still wet. Really don't want to go straight to that uh, shiny, shiny metal yet. Now I do. In fact, I'm going to use a clean brush for that, which is why I brought two. And I saved the one with a really good tip on it so that I can get that nice line. And then I'll just feather that in a bit. And I'll emphasize it right here on the front. Drag it down the sides a little bit. Just a hint. All right, so now the trick is how much of this I'll be able to show you. One thing you can tell is that from the bottom, I mean, this is pretty much matte black, right? This is the very bottom. So hopefully that transition will start to see the shine, start to see the shine, start to see the shine, and then on the top, kaboom. You can see how dark it gets on the bottom compared to that nice bright spot on the top. But it still has some metallic sheen, obviously. Get some reflection. But nothing like the albedo on the top. You can see how it really starts to transition away there. In fact, I want a little more of that, so I'm going to do that. Came up a little too low on the sides there. Ooh, too much. But I can always use my finger. Drag that down. There we go. Perfect. So I like that. That is what I was after. Um, the last thing I need to do is actually take this little brush again, get some of this. And if you tuned in last week, you'll remember I made rifling for inside the barrel. So I really want to make sure that's visible. And the barrel itself is all shiny. Knock that back later with some pigments and such, but right now, just need to see my lovely rifling. Not even sure the camera will be able to get that without some serious adjustment like it took last time. Let's give that a go real quick, see if we can make that for you quick. You can see it's really fun. No, too dark in there to really pick up. Not gonna like it. So I'll get it in the photos when it comes time to do that. 
Alright, yeah, da da ba da ba da ba some of the painter of rusty things in the Reaper forums. Oh, if not rust, then pretty green grime. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I mean that's very much my passion, so I applaud you. <laughs> Keep it up. Alright. Now that I've done the barrel, the other pieces should be dry. So let's just take them one at a time. Whichever one's handy. Gonna need a bit more engine metal in there. And I'm gonna need a bit down here for that mid tone that I was making earlier. Enjoy blending these right together. A bit right there doesn't matter. I'll fix that later. When I get around to doing that panel, Let's cover this in a bit. Up, <clears throat> bring that dark color more back in again. Well, Jordan, you say you're not up to this level of weathering effects. I hope that one of the things that I can demonstrate for you is that what I do is actually fairly simple. The techniques are not challenging. It's just a bit of practice, of course. And I think you'll be surprised at how quickly you can get uh, really good results. I know I might make it look a bit easier because I've had the practice, uh, but I assure you that the techniques I'm using are fairly simple. Um, I know some crazy weathering techniques, but I don't really use them often. They're just not as convenient as the... Uh, Simple, more reliable stuff. Just blend this while I'm thinking about it. It's that mid tone color again. We're running low on that. And hey, I need some, so let's do that. <laughs> Go figure, right? I have been trying to get the studio finally finished. Everything that needs to be put away is now in here. Uh, the garage has all been sorted out. 
it's just the last of putting things away and there's plenty of storage now got rid of a lot of stuff including almost all of my old paints and uh, well I'm cleaning I've been rocking out to the um, nightmare revisited soundtrack it's the tributey thing to uh, nightmare before Christmas I've been having a lot of fun with that Marilyn Manson singing This is Halloween is definitely a treat. Ooh, I'm painting this backwards. Bad, Justin. Bad. Wait, no. Good, Justin. Good. I was right the first time. <laughs> oh, ain't that the way of it? All right. Let's have a mid tone in here. some of that highlight. And hey. Hey honey. Shh, I'm working. So let's take a look here um, real quick at the difference uh, since it may not be obvious um, at the moment. Even when we get these things close together, they may not be quite as obvious. Let me finish that too. But hopefully you can see, and I'll put these two side panels close together. What I mean in terms about the directional highlighting on the metal now, too. So we've got nice dark panels down here. You'll see how it shades very quickly, but the top doesn't get as shady. It's all dark down there, all shiny up there. So you can see I've only got the silver in that corner. Same thing on this one. It's got that tire black mix down here. So we're only getting reflection from those raised areas. And I'll emphasize some of that with the dry brushing later. Oh, and thank you, Jordan. I'm really enjoying that rusty truck. I hope to get around to it again soon. I need to get this uh, piece finished for the Nova Open uh, Charitable Foundation. And then, oh yeah, I'll be back to my truck. I've wanted to paint that truck for years. I'm actually gonna add more shadow. It's so reflective. That I feel like I'm losing too much of it, so I'm stippling in more shadow. There we go. So now you can really start to see the shadow and the emphasis. And that's what I want. I want to keep that contrast there. Uh, running sort of out of time. So what I'm going to do is actually switch to the center body panel here and get that one done so we can see a little better contrast in how the two pieces are going to look together. And then compare it to that other side panel there, right? Of course, right. I'm 
adjusting the house to make that one. Right? Of course, right? Come to me, wet metallic pants. Let me thin you. Like you have never been thinned before. So the next upgrade for this channel is figuring out how to get some uh, return audio going so that you guys can all join me in a nice musical sing-along. <laughs> that way we can finally have music, right? Whatever it takes, come on, we can do it. I mean, it doesn't always have to be musicals. I'll accept some daily music for occasions. Brush is too saturated. Pull that paint out of there. Put that block back. So that panel should be nice and stark. There you go. You can really see the shadow on that one. Bring that down just a touch right over here. Yeah, so that one's pretty obvious. Good. Good, good, good. It should be. And in this case, since I'm just doing that whole section with that, I'm actually just going to come through with some water and clean it out a bit. And here, it's still going to make it nice and dark for me. And last but not least, boop, boop, doo doo, boop. None on the rest. Not for you. Hey, Greg. Have fun at work. Thanks again for tuning in. Always great to see you. Can we still say C in a virtual world when it's something like that? Nice to assume that's actually you on the other end of that uh, icon there.
Let's see, let me move that something in the right direction. You wasn't there. No. Nothing to care about. So the last thing I'll do is hit these with some pencils. We'll really get a look at the contrast we're starting to put together here. Contrast and direction. And again, you can see with the shading even on this one, you know, pointing up, that triangular shadow is there, this triangular shadow is here. Uh, so it's very much directing the attention up. Same on this one, start down in the corner and gets brighter up to this corner. So again, we're going boom. So light, dark, light. This light is moving up this way, right into that dark spot. Same with the oranges here, they come up against that dark. So that's going to help them stand out. Dark to light, dark to light, dark. So tick tack, tick tack, working its way up. Tick tack, tick tack, tick tack, working its way up. And that emphasis is still true down here, of course, where we've got that dark shadow you can see now because there's metal way down here and this is where that ends so that's how dark that shadow gets all the way to pure black right there so again drawing that eye up over to here where it's light going this way into the dark section here where it's light dark to light right pretty great and the gun a little differently, of course, because it's quite dark down there. Still getting your shine, but you start to see more and more and more and more and more and more until it starts to get a little bit of there. Boom. I wonder if I can use the light just a bit to make that work a little more obviously. Well, actually, yeah, I think that uh, is a pretty good indication if uh, from the bottom, you know, with the light not directly on it, absolutely no albedo. <laughs> you start rolling it around a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then boom, we get that one nice shiny bright spot. And then it'll start to fade again. Down to nothing. So later I'll have to... Uh, weather this up i'm going to take this and add uh, scratches and blemishes and marks and um, really make it look you know used <laughs> like it would be uh, and then add some color on some of these panels and uh, figure i'll add some checks up here and maybe make this band a color that way it's got a little bit of pop all right so i do want to hit these with a pencil but before i do that i do want to do a quick dry fit. See how it actually looks instead of how it might look. Now, I don't know if the center panel will stay even though it's vertical, but we'll try. Or horizontal, it's flat. No! Why, Charlie, why? Oh, I need a lid. That lid will travel. There we go. Well, good. That's going to mess everything up. Oh, we're all going to die. Which may be true, but it's not relevant at the moment. Or timely. There we go. Stay on lid. You should be the easiest part here to dry fit. Thank you. I'm dropping pieces like you do. All right. I think you actually want to be like that. Inside the lid. There it goes. All right. Now I get it. Just have to be smarter than the uh, model that only comes with finished step-by-step -step instructions. Here's how we. This looks when you finished this step. I'm waiting to roll over that with my chair.
There we go. Ah, oh, no. There we are. Like so, and like so. The light back on this. And there we are. That's what we've put together today is just by throwing down some rust and some metallic. And boom. And we've got that nice yellow pop here for some color. And we're going to bring more color in around it. But otherwise, here is the business end so far. And I'm going to wait to glue all of this until I actually have the stampa in hand because I want to make sure it all fits. But yeah, we've still got that nice modulation all going up towards the top and the front, including on the metallics. We're good to go. Adding to the gun. Dark at the bottom, shiny on the top. And it has teeth. <laughs> so there we go, folks. Thank you again so much for tuning in. It's always a pleasure uh, to have you for another Workbench Wednesday. Uh, there'll be another one, of course, next week. I look forward to it. Uh, please feel free to drop your questions either in the comments or on our Facebook page if you'd like me to cover something in particular for you. Uh, otherwise, I will continue uh, working on the Stampa uh, so that it can get off on time to the Nova Open Charitable Foundation. You will find a link to them, uh, to the NOCF in the comments, and we hope that when the tickets go on sale, you'll be ready to support them uh, and get your chance to win this and other great models. Uh, and again, a special thanks to uh, Forge World and not just Games Workshop, but specifically Games Workshop at Lake Crest Village. If you're in the area, you'll find uh, lots of Secret Weapon regulars and fans uh, and uh, myself in there on a regular basis. Um, yeah, it's a great shop run by a great manager. And uh, yeah, thanks for their uh, support in this as well. In the meantime, happy hobbying, and I look forward to seeing you all next week.